Hello everyone. So welcome to this short video explaining the basic anatomy of thyroid gland and associated structures. So the thyroid gland is a butterfly shaped endocrine gland which is located in the antero inferior aspect of our neck. And this is the picture to show you how exactly is a very well placed in front of neck in relation with the trachea that is windpipe. So this butterfly shaped gland got two parts. So that means on right side we have right lobe and left side we have left lobe and these two lobes are connected by a middle part called as isthmus of thyroid gland. And it weighs around 30 gram in adult and its measurement is around 5.2 cm in its height and 5.2 cm in its width and 2.5 cm thickness. But this isthmus part is somewhat different. This is a small quadrilateral part which connects two lobes, right lobe and left lobe. This is quadrilateral and it shows around 1.2 cm in its uh, transverse diameter and its vertical diameter also is equally 1.2 cm. Now let us see the capsular coverings of the thyroid gland. We have two coverings. Number one, it's true capsule. The true capsule of the thyroid gland is very closely adherent to the thyroid tissue. So this is the thyroid gland, thyroid tissue. So there you have the true capsular covering which is formed by the condensation of the connective tissue part of the thyroid gland itself. Peripherally, it is condensed to form the true capsule. And outside we have the false capsule. This green shadow is denoting the false capsule. That is somewhat thicker and it is derived from the pre-tracheal fascia. So the false capsule is a derivative from the pre-tracheal fascia. And this false capsule is that is forming the suspensory ligament of the belly. So in this posterior view I would like to show you this is your trachea or the windpipe. Just above that you have the laryngeal cavity. Here if you closely observe you have a cartilage over here that is your cricoid cartilage above the thyroid cartilage. So you have the right lobe of thyroid gland and left lobe of thyroid gland. The false capsule which is this brown shadow, this false capsule is getting connected to the cricoid cartilage by a ligament called as suspensory ligament or you can call as ligament of berry. So this connection between the false capsule of the thyroid gland and the cricoid cartilage, this is the reason for the movement of thyroid gland uh, up and down during swallowing. Now let us discuss in detail about various parts of thyroid gland. First we have to explain about two lobes. We have a right lateral lobe and a left lateral lobe respectively. And these two lobes are connected by an isthmus. Occasionally from the upper border of isthmus you may get another lobe here upward projection. This is called as pyramidal lobe but this is not always present. So each lobe if you consider that is roughly a pyramidal shaped one. That got a base which is below. This is the base portion of the thyroid gland, thyroid lobe. And the apex of the thyroid lobe is located upwards or above. So this is the apex of left lobe of thyroid gland. And there are three surfaces. If you consider, you can say uh, the la lateral surface or the anterior surface. Again, you have the medial surface. So the lateral surface, medial surface will be directed inwards. And you have another surface behind that is posterior lateral surface. And you have two borders, one is anterior border, here you can see this is the area of anterior border of lateral lobe and this is the area of posterior lobe of lateral lobe behind. But the isthmus got two parts, upper border, lower border, these are the two borders of isthmus and you have two surfaces for the isthmus, anterior surface which is facing forwards and behind that you have posterior surface which is in relation with the trachea that is behind. So these are the parts of thyroid gland. Now let us see the structures which are related to each parts of the thyroid gland. So the base portion of the thyroid gland that will receive an artery that is called as inferior thyroid artery. So this is the inferior thyroid artery which is related to the base of the thyroid gland which will go and supply to the thyroid gland multiple branches are provided. And remember one branch from the inferior thyroid artery that is called as ascending branch. It will run upwards 
This is called as ascending branch of inferior thyroid artery. So this inferior thyroid artery is a branch of thyrocervical trunk. This is thyrocervical trunk. This is its inferior thyroid artery which will enter to the base portion. And the thyrocervical trunk uh, will provide other branches also. And the same artery you can appreciate here that is the thyroid cervical trunk on left side, the right side. And it is going and supplying to the base of this right lobe. So this is left lobe and this is right lobe in the posterior view. Further the apex if you consider, to the, towards the apex you have another artery which is uh, coming from above downwards. This is called as superior thyroid artery. This superior thyroid artery which is coming from above, there is a branch from the external carotid artery. The superior thyroid artery is the first branch of external carotid artery. This superior thyroid artery after emerging from the external carotid artery, it will reach to the apex of the thyroid lobe. On either side, on left side also same thing will happen, on right side also same thing will happen. So this superior thyroid artery after reaching to the apex, it will divide into an anterior branch that will run along the anterior border and it will reach the superior border of the isthmus. There it will anastomose with the fellow artery of opposite side. That is the anterior branch of superior thyroid artery of left side also. But remember, the posterior branch of superior thyroid artery, this will run along the posterior border and it will anastomose with the ascending branch of inferior thyroid artery along the posterior border. Already we have talked about the ascending branch of inferior thyroid artery. This will anastomose with the posterior branch of superior thyroid artery along the posterior border. Okay. So next we have to talk about the surfaces relations. So these are the relations of uh, bo uh, base and apex. Okay, base, inferior thyroid artery, apex, superior thyroid artery, respectively. So next we have to talk about the relations of various surfaces. So first if you consider the lateral surface of the thyroid gland, definitely this lateral surface is related to certain muscles. These are the infrahyoid muscles. So the infrahyoid muscles like sternohyoid, sternothyroid and again you have the omohyoid muscles. So these are the strap muscles which are located in front of the neck just below the hyoid bone. This is the hyoid bone of the neck and here this is the shadow of thyroid gland. Almost this will be the area of the lobe of thyroid gland and this is the isthmus portion. So the muscles related to the lateral aspect, lateral surface of the lobe is the infrahyoid muscles like sternohyoid and sternothyroid and you have here another muscle called as homohyoid muscles that is the relations of lateral surface again outer to this you may get the fascia and the skin of the neck now the medial surface medial surface of the thyroid gland is related to two tubes two nerves two muscles and two cartilages respectively Everything you can remember the number 2, the digit 2. So the two tubes which are related to the medial surface of the thyroid gland. One is your trachea or the windpipe is very clear. This is the outline of your thyroid gland. Just behind or in the medial aspect you have the tube called as the trachea or the windpipe. Further behind the trachea you can expect another tube called as esophagus that is your foot pipe. So the two tubes are trachea and esophagus your foot pipe and windpipe respectively. Two nerves are number one you have an external laryngeal nerve and you have the recurrent laryngeal nerve. This is the recurrent laryngeal nerve that is a branch coming from the uh, superior laryngeal nerve. There is a branch in turn from the vagus nerve. External laryngeal nerve is supplying to the cricothyroid muscle that is related to the thyroid and the recurrent laryngeal nerve which is uh, running upwards okay in the in between trachea and esophagus this is the recurrent laryngeal nerve that nerve also is related on the medial aspect of the thyroid gland two muscles are number one the cricothyroid muscle here already we have learned about cricothyroid muscle in the larynx additionally you have inferior constrictor muscle of the pharynx okay the cartilages are the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilages respectively so these are the relations of the medial surface of the thyroid lobes and here every textbooks of anatomy will be explaining a cross section at the level of the thyroid gland in the neck that will clearly tell you what are the relations you may observe all the two tubes two nerves 
two muscles and the two cartilages respectively. So this diagram is very important in exam point of view. Further, we have the relations in the posterolateral surface of the thyroid gland. The posterolateral surface relations are nothing but the carotid sheath and its contents. So the carotid sheath contains the structures, three structures like internal jugular vein, the common carotid artery and the vagus nerve respectively. These are the three structures with the, which are located within the carotid sheath. So on either side, on the right lobe, lateral lobe of the thyroid gland and on left lateral lobe of the thyroid gland, both sides you can expect the relation in the posterior lateral surface that is the carotid sheath and its contents. Relations of borders, if you explain already, we have seen certain relations like the anterior border is related to the anterior branch of superior thyroid artery, which will run along the anterior border and reaching to the upper border of isthmus to anastomose with the fellow artery of left side or opposite side. But posterior border relation, you have to be very careful. That means Along the posterior border, you have the ascending branch of inferior thyroid artery and posterior branch of superior thyroid artery. Plus, you have the parathyroid glands. Parathyroid glands are located or related to the posterior border of thyroid gland. Now, if you talk about the relations of isthmus, its upper border will be related to the arterial anastomosis between right and left branches of superior thyroid artery, that is anterior branches. Occasionally, you may get this pyramidal lobe from its isthmus region. But its inferior border will be giving emergence of the vein called as inferior thyroid vein that will usually drain into left brachiocephalic vein. So that's the relations of uh, inferior border of isthmus. Anterior surface of isthmus will be related to the skin and the fascia and the strap muscles of or the infrahyoid muscles of the neck. But remember the posterior surface of the isthmus will be related to the trachea exactly speaking second to fourth tracheal ring so second third and fourth tracheal rings are related to the uh, isthmus of thyroid gland now let us discuss the blood supply of thyroid gland the blood supply of thyroid gland if you consider you have various arteries to supply oxygenated blood to the thyroid gland and there are three veins to drain the deoxygenated blood from the thyroid gland. So the main arteries which are supplying to the thyroid gland is one is superior thyroid artery. So this superior thyroid artery on either side it will be arising from the external carotid artery and it will reach to the apex of the thyroid gland. At the area of apex of thyroid gland it will divide into anterior branch and posterior branch. Already we have seen this story. Anterior branch will anastomose with the fellow artery of opposite side along the upper border of isthmus. And the posterior branch will be anastomosing uh, with the ascending branch of inferior thyroid artery. So that also already we have seen. So this is the shadow to show you how exactly ascending branch and the posterior branch of superior thyroid artery is anastomosing along the posterior border. So here along this superior thyroid artery you have to expect another nerve called as external laryngeal nerve and remember this superior thyroid artery provides another branch before reaching to the apex that is called as in the superior laryngeal artery that will pierce the thyrohyoid membrane in order to supply the laryngeal cavity above the level of vocal cord that is internal laryngeal uh, superior laryngeal artery and the inferior thyroid artery that will be accompanying another nerve over here that is your recurrent laryngeal nerve. So occasionally the thyroid gland especially its, its must portion will be supplied by another branch. This is a tiny branch, tiny artery called as arteria thyroidia ima or ima artery. If it is present most of the time it will be a direct branch from arch of iota or may be arising from the brachiocephalic trunk. So that is called as arteria thyroidia ima. It will come and supply to the isthmus region. So this is a rare branch, may not be present always. And this is a diagrammatic uh, representation, how exactly in the cadaveric specimen, these uh, thyroid lobes and isthmus, these are located in relation with the Adam's apple or the thyroid cartilage. And further below it will be uh, related to the trachea. And you have the sternocleidomastoid over here. 
So this is how exactly the cadaveric specimen in front of neck, the thyroid gland is located. Now let us see certain clinical anatomy related to the thyroid gland. Number one, the goiter, that is the enlargement of the thyroid gland. So there are multiple reasons for enlargement of the thyroid gland. But remember the thyroid enlargement, the swelling in front of the neck, you will have to examine the patient from behind. And by inspection itself, you can come to know whether the swelling is arising from thyroid gland. Once the patient is extending the neck, and if you tell the patient to swallow some saliva, if the swelling is moving up and down while swallowing, definitely that will be arising from the thyroid gland because the ligament of berry or suspensory ligament is connecting the thyroid gland to the cricoid cartilage. The thyroidectomy is the procedure that is uh, the surgical removal of the thyroid gland. In case of a huge goiter or in case of a thyroid cellular carcinoma, CA thyroid, this can be performed. But remember, while thyroidectomy, the posterior border of the thyroid has to be retained by the surgeon because we know the uh, most important relation of the posterior border of the thyroid posterior gland, that is the parathyroid glands are located in order to, to avoid the accidental of removal of the parathyroid gland, which is essential for the proper calcium level in the blood. And hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism, this is physiological. Based on the reduced level and increased level of the thyroid hormones, the patient may have show the features of hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism respectively. So that's all the brief anatomy of the thyroid gland. Thank you.